Photo body radiation is short for TBI. It's basically a mega a mega voltage photon beam that's given to patients who have leukemia, multiple myeloma, or a plastic anemia, or any other type of cancer that requires radiation therapy. Uh, we use a micronucleus assay, which is in vitro, which were in uh, petri dishes, and we gave them radiation. So, micronucleus for damage. Um, HPBLs are human blood lymphocyte cells, which are white blood cells. MNI micronuclei are um, when cells are dividing during the nuclear separation if they are um, given damage. The chromosomes might break or they might be a deletion and any of those chromosomes that have breaking and are lagging form another nucleus. So you have more than two nuclei during separation, which is not normal. And we can count those to assess the damage. The objective was basically to induce the um, DNA damage using radiation and HBGL to count micronuclei. Um, we did this because we had a dose response curve, which was from zero to eight gray of radiation. My job last year was to count five and six gray and see how much damage there was to add to the curve, which had already been started since it's part of a bigger project. So some of the materials we had HPBLs, which are the white blood cells. Some of the chemicals we used were RPMI, medium, for the cells to grow in, for the culture. We used a cell mass so we could separate cell membranes. And, and then we used DOPI to stain the cells. We used a microscope, some flasks, a centrifuge tube, the gamma radiation chamber, pipettes, fridge, freezer, computer, some of the normal lab equipment. The blood was collected from a donor, a patient from a nursing category who has cancer. We, oh no, here they didn't have cancer, excuse me. Um, and it was irradiated in the gamma chamber. And then it was cultured, it was grown to induce cell division. We used um, cyto kinesis B to stop the cell division and so that we can harvest the lymphocytes out of the blood so we can have the white blood cells separated from basically. And then we burst the cell membrane so we can see the nucleus. The fixative was added and the white blood cells were placed on a the slide. They were washed with PBS. And we used a vector shield mounting medium with DAPI so we could view them under the microscope. We had a cover slip with nail polish so it could stick. And then the slides were scored with micronuclear. Um, we used a fluorescent microscope, which is different than your light microscope, where the light comes from the bottom and you're looking through a mirror. Here, the light is emitted through a machine, a UV, and that light is reflected. It excites the cells and you view fluorescence. The samples we collected were before the treatment, before radiation, um, then four to six hours after the first radiation, and then before the third time the, the patient received radiation, and 24 hours after the first time. The micronuclei does um, separate from the main nucleus, so it is a, you are able to count it. We counted about 500 to 1,000 cells per dosage, of bi um, nuclear lymphocytes. The dose response curve, which I will show you in a second, is, is um, we found it to be a linear curve, so as the radiation given increases, so does the damage, so do the amount of micronuclei. And here's um, what I was talking about the whole time. This is the dose response curve. That's the radiation dosage from zero to eight grade. And um, you can see that as the radiation increases, so does the damage. The only place that's not visible is between six and seven grade, where six grade has more damage, but there could be error in that data, we're still verifying that. That's a cell in zero grade, you can see there's only two nucleus, it's normal. That's two grade of radiation, about two minutes of direct radiation. The cell pretty much um, repaired itself, but there's still damage. And at five grade, it's way too much. There's four um, micronuclei, that means the cell is badly damaged. So here we can see, for example, patient one, one of the donors. Before TBI, they had about 0.1 micronuclei per cell. Whereas 
with um, in sample two, they had about 0.2, and after 24 hours, they have 0.7. Now, if you go back to the dose response curve, you can tell that 0.7 is about between three and four grade radiation. So that patient received that much radiation during therapy. And we do this for memorial and carrying, so they know that they're giving the right amount of radiation, not so much, so that the normal cells are damaged, but only the cancer. That's just some data on how the cells were collected and the data on the patients, which is confidential, we don't have their names, but that's for us if they had chemo before or after, so we can tell the difference. And in conclusion, we found that TBI um, radiation does induce micronucleus formation. Increasing the dosage of radiation includes, um, increases the amount of MNI. And we found that the higher the frequency of the micronuclei, the higher the uh, damage to the cell. These are some of my references. And my non -admins. Um, we hypothesized through the, the papers that I had to read out. Uh, there's not a lot of work that's been done into this, and there's only one guy that's basically like the, the pioneer, Michael Finesh. So all the papers were on him, and he basically said that you can use the micronuclear index to tell how much damage that has been to itself. Any other questions? Yes. He said, um, how do you burst the cell membrane? Basically, what we, what we do here is um, we, play, we put the lymphocytes, um, we separate them, and then we use the fixative. We use a 3 to 1 methanol to acetic acid. And it's a, it, the, when you add um, the chemicals to the slide, the cell membrane is burst. Well, you write it in the slide, you can add it in the centrifuge tool before. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, did you change the frequency of the uh, radiation or the intensity? Yeah, um, it's changed. That's, that was the response curve. That was basically right here. It was on um, two grade radiation is about two, a little more than two minutes of direct radiation to the cell done in a chamber. And so we changed it from all the way from zero to eight, and these were eight different petri dishes given eight different amount of radiation. But with that, you did the frequencies around the same frequency, but a different amount of radiation. Same frequency, different amount. So why are you studying micronuclei? I'm studying micronuclei because part um, of this project was that when patients receive radiation, you want to make sure that they only get as much as they need to cure the cancer and not to damage the regular cells because the patients are weak enough as it is. And so we wanted to, once we have this curve that we do separately using cells out of the body, we can count the micronuclei in a patient that's donated their blood after they've gotten um, radiation therapy. And we can compare it to tell, okay, the, the patient had um, approximately three to four grams of radiation, and let's say they were only supposed to get two, the doctors know that next time they're supposed to give them less, or if they need more, the doctors know they're supposed to give more. So it's just like to compare that. So what is in a micronuclear? A micronuclear could be anything. It's mostly chromosomes when um, there's a fragment, when they're damaged in a fragment, our sister chromatid of one of the chromosomes falls off, and then the nucleus will form around it because the cell is thinking it's another set of chromosomes. But that's not normal because they're only supposed to have two. Yeah. Is there a way to isolate cancer cells from normal cells so that they don't damage normal cells? Well, that's the thing with leukemia. Leukemia is in your blood, so they're going to give you radiation through your whole blood. You can't separate blood cells is too hard. So all your cells are getting the damage. Hopefully the cancer must die off. 